this algebraic geometry video will be a review of Hilbert polynomials of graded modules over a graded ring. So um, suppose M is a graded module over a graded ring where this ring will be um, generated over a field K by various elements X1 up to X um, K, where the degree of Xi is going to be some number Di greater than zero. So it will be a quotient of this by some graded ideal, of course. Um, so for applications, um, we might take R to be the same as M, and R might be the graded ring associated with some projective variety. So if you've got a projective variety generated by some, sorry, corresponding to some graded ideal, then this gives us a graded ring. And we can ask, what is the growth rate of these components MN? And the growth rate of the MN might tell us something about the variety. If, if these numbers grow big, it suggests the variety is big in some sense. Um, so we encode these dimensions as the following function, fmx, and we're just going to encode it as sum of x to the n times the dimension of mn where this is the dimension of mn as a vector space over the field k. And we will take m to be finitely generated. Um, and we want to know what does this function look like? And the, the, the basic um, result is that f mx is a rational function um, moreover it's a rational function with a very restricted denominator as we will see in a moment um, and what you do is you just look at the following exact sequence we have naught goes to the kernel of xk so we pick one of the generators goes to m, goes to m dk, um, goes to m dk over xk times m. Um, so um, here, this map here is multiplication by xk. Um, um, and we have this exact sequence and you can now look at the graded pieces of each of them and if you've got an exact sequence of vector spaces then the dimension of this minus the dimension of this plus the dimension of this minus the dimension of this is always equal to zero so we get a relation between the functions of these four modules moreover this module here is a module over um, our quotient out by xk and this thing here is also a module over the, the ring r quotient out by xk. Um, so um, um, f of m dk is equal to x to the dk times fm, um, I forgot to say m of dk means m with the graded shifted by dk. So this just means shift the grading. So um, we see um, one um, minus um, x to the minus dk, times fm is something involving this um, module and this module and th these are modules over rings with smaller numbers of generators so by induction these are rational functions 
Um, so uh, this shows that f of m is a rational function. Um, so um, what we find is that um, f, uh, I guess I was accidentally writing f of m where I should have written a subscript. Um, so f of m is a rational function with denominator um, dividing 1 minus x to the d1, 1 minus x to the d2, and so on, 1 minus x to the dk, again by induction on k. Well, um, the most important special case is when all the di are equal to 1, although it's sometimes useful to have this more general version. So, for instance, this would just happen if you took the polynomial ring on generators x1 to xn and gave everything the obvious grading. In this case, the denominator is 1 minus x to the power of k. Um, and if we expand 1 over 1 minus x to the k, um, we see that it's... Um, Sorry, the k should be there. Um, we see that the coefficients of um, the powers of x for i greater than or equal to naught are given by polynomial in i. For instance, 1 over 1 minus x to the 1 is 1 plus x plus x squared and so on. 1 over 1 minus x squared is 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared and so on and in, in general the coefficients here are actually given by certain binomial coefficients which are going to be polynomials so they're degree naught for 1 minus x to the 1 degree 1 for 1 minus x squared and so on um, no, notice that they're only a polynomial in i for i greater or equal to zero for i less than zero, of course, they're well. They're still given by a polynomial, but they're given by a different polynomials. So there's a sort of um, discontinuity in the behaviour of these coefficients at x to the power of zero. So what this means is that dimension of m n, the um, de degree n piece of the module m, is a polynomial in n for n large and greater than zero, of course. Um, if n is sufficiently small, then you run into the problem that these things here are not polynomials um, for x negative, sorry, for, for negative powers of x. Um, so this is called the Hilbert polynomial Of, of m. So the Hilbert polynomial describes how fast the graded pieces of m grow in, in large degree. Um, well, this polynomial has the following rather special property. In general, it's got, um, um, in, 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 in general, its coefficients need not be integers. However, this polynomial has the following property that f of n is an integer for n an integer. So this is an integer valued polynomial. That's because for any number n, f of n is always going to be the dimension of some graded piece of n. Well, Actually, that's true for n sufficiently large, but if, if, if a polynomial is integer for large integer values, then it's integer for all values. So um, what do integer valued polynomials look like? Well, pretty obviously, if, a naught, if all the numbers a i are 0, then a0 plus a1x plus, plus a k x to the k is always an integer if x is an integer and all the ai's are integers. And you can ask the converse. If you've got an integer-valued polynomial, are all its coefficients integers? 
Well, obviously not, because x times x minus 1 over 2 is always an integer for x, an integer. But its coefficients are x squared over 2 minus x over 2. So an integer valued polynomial need not have integer coefficients. So what we want to do now is to classify the integer valued polynomials. Well, let, let's write down some integer valued polynomials. Well, there are some obvious examples. You can take one or x or x times x minus one over two or x times x minus one times x minus two over three factorial. And you notice these are all just binomial coefficients. So this is x choose zero, x choose one, x choose two, x choose three and so on. And binomial coefficients are always integers. So these are certainly integer value polynomials. And what we're going to show is that these actually span all integer valued polynomials. And one way to see that is to look at the values of these for small integers. So um, that the value for x being 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on of these polynomials is as follows. First of all, this one is 1 for x equals 1, and we don't really care what it is for other values of x. Um, the, the, the next one is um, 0 for x equals 0 and 1 for x equals 1, and we don't care what the other values are. This one is 0 for x equals um, 0 or 1, and it's 1 for x equals 2, and we don't care elsewhere. And this one is 0 for the first three values of x and so on. So, so we're sort of getting all we're interested in are these values, and we don't care um, what they are anywhere else. Now, now suppose f of um, n is a degree k integer valued polynomial. And now we can arrange for linear combination. Um, so we can find a linear combination um, of these binomial polynomials which is 0 for x equals 0, 1, up to k. And that's because um, we can first um, choose a 0 to make it vanish at x equals 1. And then we can choose a 1 to make it vanish. Sorry, we choose a 0 to make it vanish at x equals 0. Then we choose a 1 to make it vanish at x equals 1. And since these numbers are zero here, that won't affect um, the value at x equals zero. And similarly, we choose a2 to make it vanish at x equals two and so on. So we can get up to this. And now this is a polynomial of degree k vanishing at k plus one points naught up to k. So it is zero for all k, for all, for all n. Because a polynomial of degree k can't have k plus one zeros. Um, so this shows that any integer valued polynomial, such as a Hilbert polynomial, must be a linear combination of these polynomials. A particularly important special case is that the leading coefficient of f is of the form um, 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 a k um, x to the k over k factorial, where a k is an integer. So although the, the coefficient of x to the k um, may not be an integer, the coefficient of x to the k when multiplied by k factorial is always an integer. And this integer will turn out to give us the degree of various algebraic varieties. Um, there's a useful variation of the Hilbert polynomial. Instead of looking at the dimension of um, 
MN, all we actually used about the dimension was that it was additive in short exact sequences. And we can use any other measure of the size of MN, provided it's additive on short exact sequence, and get a sort of Hilbert polynomial out of that. Um, so next lecture will describe some applications